Well, it's been a while since the last episode, but we had to wait for our drummer to kick his heroin habit. Uh, so now that I'm back, we can finally finish tracking the drums to this. And uh, basically, like I said in one of the previous episodes, is I started with just a slightly dynamic MIDI track as a guide to track everything else too. Uh, a lot of times, if you have like a legit band set up, you might want to have the drummer go first and everybody track to him or her. But uh, since I'm more of a guitar player, I'd rather track the guitars to uh, a more dynamic click and then kind of replace that with a kit later. So if you remember that uh, track, is basically just like a four count beat, right? The hi-hat was dynamic, one and two and three and four and. And basically the kick was on the one, one and two and three and four and. So we've got snare on the two and the four, kick on the one, uh, and uh, so like one, And the kick's on the three and the end of three. Like the, the classic rock beat that uh, everything else uh, goes by. Now, one thing that I kind of wanted to incorporate was the sound of triplets in between some of those uh, type things. Now, if you notice, I'm playing open-handed because I'm a lefty. So a lot of times you see a drummer play cross-handed like. But I play open-handed because I just feel this is how I taught myself. So uh, open hand just means the left hand is here. Another thing you might notice is uh, now that I'm tracking it for real, I'm getting rim shots on the snare. Now the difference between that, if you don't know what that is, uh, if you just hit a snare hit like in the center of the snare, it makes one sound. A rim shot is where you get the, the rim and the center at the same time. So it kind of has like a, like a crack it kind of cuts through a mix a little bit more. So what I'm really gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of listen to the guide, and we're gonna talk about the different parts. And in between some of the beats, I'm gonna add a triplet vibe on the hi-hat. So basically, if this is like... Okay, so right there, if this is going every beat, a triplet would be splitting those into three beats. Triplet one. So in context, that would sound kind of like. So it kind of adds a little bit of life because it is like the most basic drum beat of all time. Uh, it's not a busy drum groove track by any stretch of the imagination. It's pretty straight. That's just a little bit of color that is in the verse part. So again, I'll probably cut in little clips of the actual drum track. If you see me playing headphones, or if you see me playing with headphones, that means I'm tracking the actual sound files. Otherwise, I'm just kind of messing around, playing around with it. Uh, but yeah, the verse, the whole verse is basically just like that. Now, sometimes you might see me hit what's called a ghost note, which is just kind of something to help keep time. You can't, you can't really hear it in the mix, but it just kind of gives like a vibe. You can hear uh, like triplets. Right, those little kind of, those little like really soft snare hits. Uh, just something that kind of really just adds a vibe to a drum kit. So some of these tips, if you have no interest in drums at all, if you program them, a lot of these, all of all of these things can be programmed into whatever you're doing uh, in any DAW. But it's kind of cool to kind of get the perspective of someone who's thinking like a drummer. And then, so if you are programming your beats, it'll sound a little more lifelike, a little more realistic, I guess. Right now, we're we'll talking. Let's talk about parts. So this is the verse. When it goes into that. Uh, the chorus or pre-chorus, however you want to label it, uh, something usually changes on the drum part. And a lot of times, and this and this is going to be an example of it, is instead of keeping time on the hi-hat, you'll keep time on like a ride, okay? This is a Zildjian A Custom ride. I think it sounds really great uh, for something like this. So what's going to happen in the chorus is instead of keeping the same time here, it's going to alternate between...
Okay, so just kind of adding that increases the volume of the, the ride hand, of the timing hand, and it also kind of adds, I guess, a little bit of maybe, I don't know, excitement or something, all right? But it's still only alternating, it's every other. Okay, and also, you know, if you're aspiring to be a drummer, if, where you hit uh, a, a cymbal has a huge effect on the sound, which, uh, you know, if you've never played a kit before, there's a lot more that goes into it than just being like, uh, again, it's where you hit it, you deal with the tip of the stick, the shoulder, the bell, uh, a lot of stuff goes into it. So, definitely, uh, drummers don't deserve a lot of respect in general, but you might want to give them like a little bit of a pass on a uh, learning instrument. Catch my eye In a random crowd of feet Of unicorns and parasites You come out strong, then pull back. So that's just that part. Uh, then at the end, it's going to go straight eh, on the ride symbol, right? Instead of the alternating thing. And again, you can do the same thing the triple it. the snare anywhere. It's just the rudiments of timing. You can add them into an acoustic guitar. Some of the acoustic guitar parts I have kind of have a little bit of that triplet tripletness going on. Uh, yeah, but that's basically essentially how I approached most of the drums. Pretty straight. Uh, maybe just a solid intro in how different parts of drums of the drum arrangement changes through different parts of the song to kind of identify which parts are which. Uh, it's a pretty simple mic setup. I have two overheads, KM184s, uh, the Neumann ones that I track the acoustic guitar with, uh, panned left and right. Uh, those are going into the Universal Audio 4710. Same thing with the snare top and bottom with two Audix i5 mics. I'm a big fan of Audix, dy dynamic mics. Uh, the kick drum is an Audix D6. I have the 6176 with the, the vocal mic that's micing the room. And essentially that's pretty much it. I don't even think I have uh, the Tom mic turned on because I'm not doing a lot of Tom stuff in this. Um, one thing that I probably will do, I haven't decided yet because I haven't mixed it yet, is the original sample for the kick at least and maybe even the snare that I had as a guide. I'll probably lead it, leave in there and blend with the actual kick because those are such well-recorded samples, uh, you know, I can't really beat that, but I can supplement that, and, and a lot of people do that. They use kind of like samples to add or replace parts of a kit. So anyways, that is basically uh, the drums. We might be adding more percussion or something anyways uh, to it later, but uh, that is the kit setup, and uh, hopefully it's gonna end up sounding good. Thanks a lot.